Hello Warlords and Generals, welcome back to my channel. In this today we'll be discussing corn in 40k, God of Blood, Murder, Slaughter, Martial Art, and Rage. The oldest of the Chaos Gods, born of the first murder, corn represents all rage and battle. Also makes him the one Chaos God to constantly gain power and influence to, due to his aspect. He is also the God of Honor and Martial Prowess. He favors those strong and skilled in melee combat, giving his followers more strength, ferocity, and combat, usually to the point they lose themselves to the rage. Korn is also an avid hate, has an avid hatred for anything magical, so whenever you see a Korn army march to war, you will never see a Psyker within their ranks, meaning if they wish to take one, they need to ally with a other chaos faction or bring in demons from one of the other chaos gods. Korn is often depicted as a gigantic muscular humanoid with dog-like angry features for a face. However, his face is usually covered by a skull adorned with the skull of conqueror kings. His exaggerated ba muscle bound features are further exaggerated by the very thick heavy overlapping plates of armor that he wears over his body to protect himself and to show himself as a true warrior god. Korn sits upon the throne, the skull of thrones, or also known as the skull throne by his followers, which is both a famous or infamous object depending on your point of view and if you're an enemy or an ally to Korn's mortal and demonic champions themselves. It is created from mountains of skulls of the slain and collectively, it is one skull of, a, of his champion surrounded by those who he slew and took the skulls of, just adding to the pile and further making it just more and more of a mountainous trophy collection for corn to sit upon. Skulls in this pile range anywhere from the strange and alien tyranid skulls to the everyman living within the Imperium. However, regardless of how many bones and skulls and blood that corn receives, his quench for battle and murder is never fully satiated. He is always demanding tribute, and his tribute is simple. Death, blood, and skulls. Always at Korn's side, whether he is sitting at the throne or standing from it, is his two-handed sword. A weapon of such great uh, destructive potential that it can slay worlds within a single swipe of its blade. It goes by many names. Wellbringer, Warmaker, and the End of All Things are just a few of the names of this devastating weapon. On top of this, it has a very unique capability, or so it is rumored, that when Korn wishes for his legions to spill forth into reality, he cuts a tear between the warp and any world he wishes for his demons to invade so that they can spill forth from the depths of his hell-like landscape of within his realm of chaos. Being built upon the foundations of murder and war, his realm of chaos is constantly ringing with it echoes of battle and the call of war horns, and those constantly dying on the fields of battle within his realm, forever satiating or attempting to his lust for battle and blood. Within the center of his realm sits the brass citadel where the skull throne is contained within. It is lit by a, fire, a great fire pit to which those who, cowards who ran from battle and were cut down by true warriors, those souls that feed this fire for all eternity. It dimly lits the within the brass citadel, which Korn's unholy castle is made from unholy steel and marble that is veined with blood on the inside of it anyway, and is constantly patrolled by... Korn's Chosen Hound, which we will cover later in a different video. The outside of his castle has decorated gargoyles to which any unfortunate who try to invade his citadel will spew forth magma hot molten iron, drenching all those invaders in a very unfortunate demise of molten magma. And his moat, which normally would be filled with water, is instead filled with boiling blood of those who have been slain on battlefields, constant amounts of it. Beyond his citadel lies leagues upon leagues of barren land littered with bones. Packs of flesh hounds prowl these lastes as their territory. One distinct feature in this barren landscape is a gigantic crevice that is miles wide and inconceivably deep. 
it is said in, within a particular rage of corns that was so deep that no mortal or even demon could truly comprehend. He smote the earth with his sword, creating this gigantic crevice for all eternity. Occasionally, the canyon of death will overflow with blood, sweeping away all the bones, skulls, and corpses left behind in the corn's realm, leaving it so that more can be put down and leaving a clean slave for newer battles to come into corn's realm and further the cycle of violence. Within corn's blood-soaked realm, there lies a massive mountain range where Magma constantly flows from, and skulls made of bra molten brass shoot out from it constantly. These mountains occasionally will gore spew forth countless amount of bloodthirsters to join the battles below the mountains and within all the realm of chaos. Within the inner slope and veils of these volcanic mountain ranges lies corns, foundries, and armories, where souls that had died in their sleep and never had a chance to do battle are doomed to forever create weapons and armor for Korn's legions eternally in servitude to the Blood God. Within this area is also the pens that the Juggernauts are kept in. They are constantly clashing against the walls for they are ferocity bound in mechanical demonic flesh. The thick iron walls of these pens, though nothing in reality could keep them secured. Within the realm of chaos, anything and everything is possible such as these pens walls. Mortal and demonic champions both, either insane or brave enough to enter these pens, will attempt to tame a juggernaut. We'll cover more on Skull Crushers later, but in general, anyone who manages to tame one of these ferocious beasts gets to ride them into battle, further gaining another boon of the Blood God. As is the nature with most of Korn's leadership, it is the best icon of those strong enough and intimidating enough to subject their will and force others to serve them within the eternal great game of the Chaos Gods. On the outer slopes of these mountains and throughout all of Korn's realm lies constant amount of bastions, ramparts, and parapets that defend, that defend Korn's realm and also manage to be the housing for his mortal and demonic legions alike. Within the outskirts that um, the other realms of Chaos uh, kind of bump into corns. He has a certain type of defense and towers of skull cannons and magma spewers where they will shoot magma at his enemies on his command only awaiting the order to fire. To add as extra support for when corn does invade the other gods of chaos's realms. So the short of it basically corn's realm is filled with nothing but arid blasted wastelands Volcanic mountains where his armories and foundries are located that arm his endless armies and just constant battles everywhere. In the center, he sits upon his skull throne within the brass citadel. The constant war feeds this realm, and it will forever feed corn, for he has engineered war within the galaxy to never end. He will always exist, even if the other gods may perish, he will always be there. And before we move on to covering the units and demonic legions of corn, I'd actually like to cover my personal favorite story uh, that exemplifies corn's uh, personality and overall powers. And it involves an orc whose nickname was Demon Killer. Now this orc was particularly strong and he led a gigantic log and he had a particular thing for wanting to kill demons over and over. I guess it's something about the fact that in his mind, killing something that can come back to life later was excessively fun. Now, Demon Killer would eventually get insane enough to journey right into the Eye of Terror to start a rampage through several demon wor worlds, and he eventually landed upon a planet that was corn owned and ran by a demon prince known as the Blood Prince. Now, Demon Killer and his wog would be slain by the demon prince and his uh, giant corn legions but corn was so impressed and enamored by this orc's bloodlust and ferocity that he gave him a blessing and that was simply that he would die every day come back to life wage a war against his demonic legions and then die again effectively making orc valhalla for demon killer to forever create combat with corn's legions and that right there is the epitome of corn's personality and powers as a god
Now we move on to the units and members of Korn's Legion, starting with his most basic infantry, the Bloodletters. As with all the Chaos Gods, his demons represent his aspects of what makes him his specific entity as a Chaos God. His most numerous are the Bloodletters, known by other names such as Chosen of Korn, Warmongers of Korn, Slaughterkin, Crimson Wrath, and Demon Corn Boys. They are known to march single file into combat, but as soon as they get even close to being able to shed blood, they instantly sprit into slaughter and break rank, becoming nothing but mad rabble of brutes slaying their foes left and right, trying to cause as much slaughter and blood dropping as they can in the name of corn. Each bloodletter carries in what is known as a hellblade into battle. When they are born within Korn's realm of chaos, they are given it and they will carry with it until for all eternity. Even a nick from this blade will cause a wound to gush blood almost eternally. Unless covered and dealt with immediately, the victim will most likely bleed out before it can get medical support. The next step up from a bloodletter would be those cavalry known as blood crushers. Bloodletters riding on top of mechanical monstrosities known as juggernauts. These things are wrath bound to mechanical form, and the way the uh, bloodletter tames one is within the same way Corn uh, expects all his followers to uh, make sure anyone follows their orders, and that's with domination and subjugation. Basically, there are pens filled with the juggernauts, and a bloodletter must mount one and subjugate it to his will. Most of the time, this ends with the bloodletter becoming a splat of blood on the wall due to the fact that juggernauts are extraordinarily hard to tame and ferocious. If a bloodletter is successful in managing to drag a juggernaut out from the pens, he becomes part of Korn's cavalry, which the charge of which is so devastating that it leaves front lines shattered. Anyone in their way tends to be trampled or impaled by the juggernaut's horn. There's also a subtype of blood crushers known as blood stalkers who specialize in crushing scouting forces and flanking enemy rears to create devastating effects to the enemy's morale and overall formations. Heralds are bloodletters who have been promoted to a leadership role within Korn's legions and how a, blood and how a herald is selected is all aspiring heralds are put into what's known as the Skull Pit and will fight each other until one remains. That one will receive the power of all the other uh, aspiring champions that stepped into the ring and will swell with power as well as his blade morphing with him into a blade of blood rather than just a normal hell blade. These bloodletters who show greater strength than the rest of their kin can be broken down into many different roles that they that take on different names to lead in to lead Korn's murderous throng into battle. Bloodmasters are the foot variant of this role. They give in the title due to the noteworthy acts of violence and their murderous tendencies. They withhold these murderous tendencies and use their malice to direct the hordes of corn, heightening the bloodlust already within each bloodletter. For those bloodletters that prefer the devastating cavalry charge, there are the Skull Masters, who lead the cavalry, the Skull Crushers, into battle, devastating front lines, and any who are not trampled or gored by the Juggernaut will soon be slayed by the Skull Masters' blade. Next are on to Corn's Flesh Hounds. Those who offend corn or cowards that run from battle, these are his attack hounds he sends after these cowards that deserve no place on a battlefield or even deserve to live in corn's eyes. Those that survive an encounter with these horrifying warp entities comment on how they are haunted by the howls echoing in their mind from corn's attack hounds. From what little babbling can be made of these mad men driven mad by the terror of these hounds, have said that any who are targeted by these hounds will be run down and torn to shreds, becoming nothing but meat for the dogs. The bones of these cowards being buried in the area in Korn's realm which the hounds patrol, at which even greater demons fear entering this territory, for the hounds are extraordinarily territorial and aggressive and will devour anyone or anything that dares enter their territory, even other corn demons such as bloodthirsters. 
The most distinct thing about a flesh hound, besides the red skin color, is the brass collar seemingly growing from the neck. These collars are forged at the very base of the skull throne, and they are physical embodiments of Korn's hatred towards psychers and all forms of magic. For any, these collars allow psyker abilities to simply bounce off of, cor of the flesh hound seemingly as if it was water, and completely ineffective against these attack dogs. On the battlefield, besides nullifying Psyker abilities, their role is to be a scouting force in advance, attacking, flanking the enemy, and uh, prodding weak points in the formation for the rest of Korn's legions to simply hit at and just devastate the enemy ranks so that they can get to the slaughter. There are two distinct demonic engines which are created within Korn's foundries for his legions to bring to war, the first being the Skull Cannon. A artillery heavy weapon piece that is also acts as a frontline chariot. This strange, this strange machine eats skulls of victims it tramples over and uses it for ammo in its cannon. So if you have the unfortunate fate of not being smashed by its wheels or killed by the two blood letters which steer the vehicle into combat, you will be devoured by it and your skull stored for later as ammunition. It will jettison all the bones and meat and gore from you out the outback of its strange composition and store the skull for later use. The other demon engine is a chariot known as a blood throne, which are the closest thing to charisma that the demons of corn get to when on the battlefield. And these strange devices can only be ridden by a type of herald known as a red master who, of the ranks, is the only one who has the will to direct the murderous tendencies of this strange, yet charismatic and bloodthirsty demon engine. Though the acts a Red Master must commit to become a Red Master and ride this very powerful charismatic device is not even known to the Inquisition of the Ordo Malleus, for it is a complete mystery and an inconceivable acts of violence must be perpetrated for it to acquire it though nothing proof or concrete has ever come up on how. Echoing the mighty dais that Korn sits upon the skull throne, this chariot charges into battle, being a locus of rage and strength for the legions of Korn, as it leads its blood letters into battle, causing them to become even more bloodthirsty and murderous in their rampages. A blood throne will charge right to worthy foes so that the Ren Master can kill it and claim skull for Korn. Any who get in the way of the Ren Master to its prize will be trampled underneath, and any who survive the charge will be slayed by the two blood letters that ride with him, who are very well practiced in this art of killing those who are not impaled or destroyed by the initial charge of the blood throne. Those the Ren Master kill himself will be adorned, their skulls will be adorned on the blood throne itself. Thus, more ancient more models of the blood throne will have Eldar Artarchs, or Chieftain, Space Marine, Chapter Masters, and many other worthy opponents' skulls adorning these demonic devices. At the top of the food chain of Korn's army lied the Bloodthirsters. There are eight types of Bloodthirsters, each following a different path to violence and slaughter. But do not be fooled, these are not just mindless servants of corn. They are incredibly intelligent and the greatest swordsmen and weapon masters within corn's legion. They are also excessively strong and destructive in their way. Standing several feet tall, or at least stories tall, the, the, the bloodthirsters will often tower among the corn demon legions, being the icon of the leaders of said legion when they go into battle. The physical appearance of these demons is the traditional demonic uh, icon-like kind of look. They are tall, red-skinned, dog-faced, leather wings, and horns adorn their head. The eight ranks of the Bloodthirsters all, all respect a uh, different aspect of Korn's uh, personality in warfare, though to assume even the lowest ranks of these eight is the weaker of them is to assume only that you will die as well as well as the fact any who assume that these brutes are sluggish and not fast at all will meet a swift and very bloody demise at their hands. Of these eight ranks, only three are seen and known more than the others, for the others are known but not nearly as in great detail, so it's hard to pinpoint the exact nature of these other five. However, these three 
are the ones most commonly seen, and among them, the unfettered furry bloodthirsters are the most seen, wielding a lash of corn and a bronze, sp a bronze spiked whip used to entangle limbs, break necks, and even whipping blood letters onward into the frenzy. On the other hand is an axe of corn, a giant axe able to cleave tanks in half. Bloodthirsters of incessant rage are the most savage of the eight ranks, having the fire of corn forge put into their chest. So deep and great is this rage that it adds enough strength for them to wield a giant bronze axe of corn as tall as a fortress gates. Those following in the wake of the carnage are driven into frenzy from its furnace hot rage. The third amongst this are usually are usually heralded by fat winged shadows as it closes in on its prey. These are the wrath of corn bloodthirsters and unlike the other two previously mentioned they are hunters rather than just straight up slaughterers and berserkers. They hunt down the mightiest foe on the battlefield and the enemies of corn, and humble them in battle with one-on-one -on -one duels in combat. Butcher, they butcher their way into the fray with a blood flail and an axe of corn, as well as being able to breathe fire, hellfire from their mouths between them and their target, melting any unfortunate get between them and the target that they decide to shoot this fire at. Once they have a target in mind, there is nothing that will stop these champions of war to get getting to their target and slaying them in honorable combat. And that reaches the end of lore on Korn's realm and his units now. I did not cover his named champions here, or at least his demonic named champions in great detail, for they deserve their own video in which I will go over great detail of their roles and how they favored they are by Korn for there's one in particular that is actually not favored by Korn at all. Tell me what you love and hate about Korn. Is he your favorite Chaos God? Is he your least favorite God, Chaos God? Let me know in the comments and please like and subscribe if you like to hear more videos about Warhammer 40k and Age of Sigmar lore. My name is Tab Hamma and I hope you have a nice day.